Good evening. Thank you for tuning into Christ Center channel. Yesterday, I started a series called Heaven and Halloween. And I asked the question of, should Christians participate in it? And I want to share with you a little from what I shared last night. And then I will go on with what I want to share tonight. So, I began at Revelation chapter 21, verses 7 and 8. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in a lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. And from there, I went to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22. And Paul says, abstain from all appearance from every form of evil. And we can see what it says in the New King James Version, which is pretty much the same thing. Abstain from every form of evil. In Ephesians chapter 5, it says that darkness are unfruitful works and that Christians should not participate in it. And rather, they should expose it, which is what I am doing with this series. I'm exposing Halloween, and I pray and hope that Christians see that according to the word, that we should not participate in it, nor should we do anything that's related to it, such as witchcraft, sorcery, and idolatry. And to see that we will go to Genesis chapter 15 Genesis chapter 15 Genesis chapter 15 this is where God speaks to Abraham and he tells them that his nation will be slaves to another nation, Egypt, for 400 years. And he says this about when they will come to the promised land. But the fourth generation, they shall return here. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. The iniquities of the Amorites aren't yet, yet complete. And to know what that iniquity is... We have to go to the book of Leviticus, and we will look at Leviticus chapter 18 through chapter 20. In verse 24, do not defile yourselves with any of these things for by all these nations are defiled which I am casting out before so what are these things that these nations did that caused them to be cast out by God let's look at some these are some really detestable things in verse 21, you shall not let any of your descendants pass through the fire to Molech, nor teach you profane the name of the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. In other words, God did not want his children practicing eugenics or any of its form. Eugenics is the idea of depopulating the human race. You know, you have a group of people that believe that they are superior than others, and so they believe that they should extinguish certain races. In other words, murder. Abortion is murder. 
and to see why we should not participate in eugenics, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and we'll be right back in Leviticus chapter 18 to see what type of defiled practices that the Amorites and the Moabites did. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And I'm going to be reading from ESV. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Paul tells that the Christians should not practice sexual morality. Whoever practices sexual immorality goes against God. And here's why. Verse 19. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. In other words, you don't own your body because you did not make it. God made the body. He owns the body, and so he expects you to use it to glorify him. And when we destroy our body, and when we destroy the bodies of the others, then we are committing a sin because we are destroying what God created. And let's go back to Leviticus chapter 18. Leviticus chapter 18. You know, we see the things that were practiced by the Amorites and the Moravites. The things that God saw were defiled. And he says, after he told not to defile these things, you shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgment. And you shall not commit any of these abominations, either any of your own nation or any stranger who dwells among you. For whoever commits any of these abominations, the persons who commit them shall be cut off from among their people. And so, God did not want the Israelites to practice sodomites. He didn't want to practice things that they did. He didn't want to practice any sexual morality. He didn't want them to practice any form of eugenics. And so, when we go on into the next chapter, Leviticus chapter 19... God tells them that they should not practice mediums. They should not practice witchcrafts. And we see that in verse 31, Leviticus chapter 19. Give no regards to mediums and familiar spirits, and do not seek after them to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. And so as children of God, We should not practice works of the devil. We should be practicing righteousness. If we go to 1 John chapter 3, John says those that practice righteousness are the children of God. Those that practice wickedness and lawlessness are of the devil. Make no mistake about it that the Halloween is the devil's holiday. It always has been and always will be. It doesn't matter if Christians try to, you know, change it so that they could have others participate so people could come on in. No, it's always the same and Christians should not participate in it. And if we go into the next chapter, Leviticus chapter 20, we see what happens to those who participate in practicing things that are abominable, such as mediums and calling out spirits like they do in Halloween. In verse 2, again, you shall say to the children of Israel, Whoever of the children of Israel or of the strangers who dwell in Israel, who gives any of his descendants, in other words, practice eugenics, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. I will set my face against that man and will cut him off from his people because he has given some of his descendants to Molech to defile my sanctuary and profane my holy name. And if the people of the land should in any way there are hide their eyes from the man when the, he gives some of his descendants to Molech, and they do not kill him. And I will set my face against that man and against his family. I will cut him off from his people and all who, per, who prostitute themselves with him to commit holotary with Molech. And look at what it says about those who practice sorcery and witchcraft. 
And the person who turns to mediums and familiar spirits to prostitute himself with them, I will set my face against that person and cut him off from his people. So we see right here that God tells his people, don't practice eugenics. Don't practice harlotry and don't practice any type of sexual morality that the other nations did that defiled themselves. And also, do not practice witchcraft. Do not practice sorcery. Or if they do, you must cut them off. And so later on, when the Israelites journeyed through the wilderness, they came across the Moabites. And the Israelites had such a presence that nations feared them. And they knew that they could not beat them in physical battle. So the Moabites found another way. They found a way to contaminate them with their abominable lifestyle. To see that, we're going to go to Numbers chapter 25. Numbers chapter 25. Now Israel remained in Asiah Grove. And the people began to commit harlotry with the women of Moab. They invited the people to sacrifice of their gods, and the people ate and bowed down to their gods. So the Israelites were doing the things that God told them not to do. And remember, God says, if anybody practices these things, they will be cut off, which is what we see. Then the Lord said to Moses, take all the leaders of the people and hang the offenders before the Lord. See, there you go. They're cut off. Out in the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may turn away from Israel. So Moses said to the people of Israel, Every one of you, his men who were joined to Baal of Peor, indeed one of the children of Israel, came and presented to his brethren a Midianite woman in sight of Moses, in sight of all the congregation, the children of Israel, who were weeping at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. Now when Phinehas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw, he rose from among the congregation, took a javelin in his hand, and he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them, the man of Israel and the woman, through her body. So the plague was stopped among the children of Israel, and those who died in the plague were 24,000. So we see 24,000 people get cut off from the Lord because they did the things that they were not supposed to do, like practice sorcery and witchcraft. All those things are related to Halloween. Now, some people that are listening to this feel like that was the God of the Old Testament. You know, he's changed, you know, and the New Testament is different. We're no longer under the Levitical law. Well, the practice of not to practice witchcraft is not a Levitical law. It's a law that still stands. Remember Revelation chapter 21, verses 8. It says that those who practice sorcery will not inherit the kingdom of God, but they will be in the lake of fire. Now, to see the idea how God separates those who are righteous and those who are evil will go throughout the Bible and to go down that path. Let's go to Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. And you're going to see that God is the same. He is the same in the Old Testament. He is the same in the New Testament. And He's the same in the future. And He's the same in Revelation. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. For I am the Lord. We see that quite a bit. I do not change. Therefore you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. I think we should say glory, hallelujah, that God does not change because we've all been extinguished long ago. He says, I do not change. You know, God separates those who are righteous and those who are not. Jesus tells that in the future, he's going to separate the goats from the sheep. And let's go to Matthew chapter 25. Now, Jesus begins telling about how he's going to return. 
He then tells him how he's going to sit on his throne of glory. And he's going to judge all the nations. He's going to gather them the same way as a shepherd gathers the sheep and the goats. Then he's going to separate the sheep to the right hand. And he's going to separate goats to the left hand. The sheep are the ones that obeyed him. They did what they were supposed to do. The goats on the left hand that did not do what he told them to do. They were disobedient. They were disobedient. And so we read in Revelation chapter 20. In Revelation chapter 20. We see Satan defeated. The author of Halloween. And after Satan is defeated, we see the great white throne judgment. Those that have their names in the book of life were the sheep. They were the ones that were born again. They are the ones that overcame, so they inherit eternal life. And look at what it says about the dead in verse number 12. And dead were judged according to their works. By things which were written in the books, the sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and haze delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one according to his works. And death and haze were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So what did they do well to see what they did do let's go ahead and go back to revelation chapter 21 and in verse 8 we see what they did but the cowardly unbelieving abominable murderers sexually immoral sorcerers idolaters and all liars shall have their part in a lake which burns with fire and brimstone which is the second death so we see what God said he would do all the way back into Leviticus. He told the Israelites that whoever participates in sorcery and witchcraft will be cut off. And we read about how they will be cut off in the future by being burned in the lake of fire. So we see throughout the Bible that Christians should not participate in sorcery, we should not participate in idolatry, and we should not participate in anything that's related to Halloween. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22, Paul says that we must abstain from all forms of evil. In Ephesians chapter 5, we should not participate in darkness, but rather expose them. This is what the series will be doing. It will be exposed in the darkness of Halloween. And I pray and hope that when Christians see this, that they, they will see in the word that they should not be participating in Halloween or anything like that. Amen. All right. And tomorrow night we will continue on in this series on Christians and Halloween and why they should not practice it.